Okay. Howdy, sports fans. What's going on, Shaka Shaka? Uh, Mr. Nelson here. And in our class, we are moving on now to bigger, better things after trigonometry. Uh, we are talking now about prime factorization, specifically uh, as it relates to uh, square roots and cube roots. That's kind of what we're doing. And this practice, what I call it, is really just leading us into um, both a further uh, uh, investigation of radicals and exponents, as well as preparing us for factoring of polynomials, binomials, all that stuff, all that fun, crazy jargon stuff that uh, you'll come to love in math. You have no choice. So, uh, prime factorization, I think, is a pretty straightforward thing, um, but I guess we need to break this word, prime factorization, into its two parts. So, what is a factor or factorization? That's essentially taking a number and just breaking it into all its divisible parts. So a number like 10, its factors would be any numbers that it's dividable by. So two, five, uh, 10, I guess itself, and technically one would be a factor too. Um, prime factors are all the numbers that are divisible by a number, or a number is divisible by, that are prime numbers. And what is a prime number? That's the second part here, prime. A prime number is any number that is only divisible by the number one and itself. So we can go through the, the prime numbers, and I'll actually put them up here. Um, I'm just gonna write them down. Uh, from one to 31, I'll write the prime numbers down. So one is not a prime number. We do not work with one as a prime number. That's just not something we do, even though it does technically Check all the boxes. 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, blah, blah, blah. That should be enough for all intents and purposes. So if we take a number, say let's just play with the number 40, for example. This is how we do prime factorization. I am going to use circles and squares. A square means that we can still break that number down. Um, it's not a prime number. Circles means that we've hit a prime number. So we stop when we hit a circle. And my approach is to always start with, we, we start with the prime numbers and I always start with number two. And I ask, can this number be divided by two? If the answer is yes, then I break it into, well, two, and whatever two multiplies by to make 40, 20. Now 20 is not a prime number, so it gets the square. And I start again at 20 and I ask, well, is 20 divided by, divided by 2? The answer again is yes. So it gets another 2 circled. And then a 10 here. 10 times 2 is 20. 10 is not a prime number, so I ask the question again. Is 10 divided by 2? It sure is, and I get a 2, and 2 times 5, and 5 is also a prime number. So now I have no more squares left. All the ends of my branches are circles. This means that these are my prime factors for 40. And I can write it like this. Four in power form, two to the power three, two times two times two, times five is equal to 10. Okay, that's one example. Let's do one more quick example. Say I was working, instead of the number 4t, let's say I was working with the number 42 this time, okay? And I'm gonna go through the exact same steps. I start with number two, and I ask, is this dividable by two? It sure is, so I go two here, and then two times 21 gives 42. And so I ask the question again, is 21 dividable by two? No. So I go to the next one, is 21 dividable by three? It sure is. And I get 3, which is a prime number, multiplied by 7 gives 21. And 7 is also a prime number. All the ends of my branches are circles now. They're all prime numbers, so I am done. And I get 2 times 3 times 7 is 42. These are my prime factors. Okay? Real intense, scary stuff, I know. So, why? Well, in the immediate, this actually helps us figure out the square roots and the cube roots of, uh, of 
random numbers. And it's pretty neat how it works. There's just an added step at the end of each uh, tree that we create that uh, takes us there. So let's work with the number to start, 1296. And let's ask the, no let's ask the question, is 1296 a perfect square? Okay, yes or no, prove it. I don't know, but I'm gonna try doing a factor tree and use the process to figure it out. So, is 1296 divided by two? It sure is. So I get two here, and I'm gonna need a calculator, which is funny because a calculator could figure this out for me in an instant, but let's do it the fun way, the long way, the scenic route. Let's take the scenic route. So I get 648. Again, I ask, is 648 divided by 2? It sure is. Divided by 2, 324. Let's ask the same question. Divided by 2, it sure is. 324 divided by 2, 162. 162 divided by 2, 81. Okay. 81 is not dividable by 2. Is 81 dividable by 3? I think it might be. Oh, look at that. So we get 3 here, and 3 times 27. Okay, 27 is not a prime number. Is it dividable by 2? No, it's dividable by 3. It is. So I get 3 here, and I get 9 here, and then 9 factors into 2 3. Okay, a lot of prime factors here. So what I do is I break them down. I have two times two times two times two times three times three times three times three. Now, because I'm asking whether we have, if this makes a square root, a perfect square, whether, take two. Because I'm asking whether 1296 uh, is a perfect square, the process to check that with my prime numbers, my prime factors, is to see whether I can group my prime factors into two equal groups that will have the same product. And if I look here, if I just put a line right down here, I have two equal groups. And in each group, I'm gonna have two times two times three times three, two times two times three times three. So this tells me right here that this is a perfect square. And what is the square root of it? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 9 is 36. So 36 times 36 gives me 1296. Or the square root of 1296 is 36. Okay? That's what we do for square roots. We find all the prime factors and then we split them into two even groups if we can. If we cannot, it's not a perfect square. Same thing, but let's ask about cube roots. And cube roots is very similar, except at the very end, we're going to try and group all our prime factors into not two, but three groups, cube. So let's try the number uh, 1796. 1728. Try 1728. So, let's start factoring. Is it dividable by 2? It sure is. That gives me 2 and 864. It feels ironic. I don't know if ironic is the word to be using a calculator to, to do this like nuts and bolts math because my calculator could figure this out for me in a second. But this is good for the brain, it's good for practice, and it's good for numeracy. So it's good to go through these exercises. Just being able to play with numbers, even though I'm not doing division myself, I could, but for speed I'm not. But just being able to break things down and to work with numbers and create these webs is good for the brain. That's why we do these types of things. You have to know why you're doing th certain things to be able to, I think, enjoy the privileges of simple things like squaring or cube rooting on your calculator. Okay, lecture over. Let's keep going. 864 divided by 2. 432 and 
and 2. Okay, or 32 is divided by 2. It gives me 216 divided by 2 again. I get 2 and 108 dividable by 2 again. I get 2. which we know is dividable into 3, because you can't divide it by 2, 3 is 9, and then 3, and 3. Okay, so I do the same thing, I collect all my uh, factors, and I like to stack them each different uh, type of factor above each other, so the 2's on a line, the 3's on another line, just because it helps me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and one, two, three. So if I need to get these into three even groups, I have to ask, okay, well, can I split these twos into three even groups? I can, and I'll get two times two, two. And then I can I split these three threes into three even groups. Yeah, well, it's gonna take one. So this is what my three groups, even groups are gonna look like. And it was possible, so that tells me, yes, this is a perfect cube. It's, it, it's got a cube root. Then I multiply each of these together, 2 times 2 is 4, so it's 12 times 12 times 12, or 12 cubed is equal to 1728, or the cube root of 1728 is 12. Done. That is cube root square roots. Uh, and this leads us, like I said, to more complex discussions, but it's a good starting point.